Hey, welcome back to Crimes and Closets. This is Beth in my closet in North Carolina. And this is Chrissy in my closet in St. Louis. Happy Monday. Yes. Yay. Happy Monday. Happy I'm Monday here. of our anniversary week. Oh, no. Yeah. No. Is it? Oh, no. Two weeks. Two weeks. Just yeah. kidding. No. I screw stuff up all the time because when we record <laughs> in advance. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's week, our anniversary getting... month. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So we'll we'll mention that again. The 29th of March, we are going live on YouTube. We've got some extra subscribers over there, so mm-hmm. that's yes. cool. So we know you guys are going to be able to join us. I'm really excited about this. I am too. I'm just yeah. excited to do it. Like, it I is mean, our favorite thing. Truly, we say this all the time to like connect with people that listen to us because when we're talking we are like talking into the like black hole of Mm -hmm. (laughs) we don't know who is listening and we feel super connected to you guys when you interact with us and it's it's our favorite thing truly really is oh for sure and just to know that if you typed a comment and we were like oh that's valid let's bring that up we could it, it would be like a way for you to interact during the show. Mm-hmm. Yeah. During an episode, actually. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be cool. Come do that. Okay. Yes. Please join us. Yes. Oh, and we have a new Patreon. We want to give a shout out and thank you to Lori C. Oh, Welcome thanks, Lori. In. Thanks, Lori. Hope you enjoy all the content that you have, the extra content. Mm-hmm. Yes. So there is a episode that just came out on Friday, yep. right? Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. Which is a really good one. And it's a Florida one. So demonic rituals. <laughs> oh, spoiler. Yeah. It's a good one. So hope you guys enjoyed that. If you're listening over on Patreon. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Business over. What you got for me? Um, well, this is kind of a silly thing, but I was, we were watching TV just last night and for some reason we were watching commercials because typically we don't, you're like, we record everything and we fast forward, you know? Right, right, right. So anyway, there's this commercial that comes on for eczema. And I paid attention because my son struggles with it right now as we're trying to figure it out. I also Um, struggle with eczema. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, like, he literally gets these big patches. We're going to a dermatologist. We're trying different stuff. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so I, like, zoned in on it. (laughs) And it's a cream or Mm -hmm. some sort of, like, topical um, application thing. And all of a sudden it says most common side effects, which you're used to hearing. They like rattle mm-hmm. off, whatever. This one said <laughs> most <laughs> common side effect, the common cold. And I what? was like, I was like, hold up, what? rewind, said it. And I looked at Emery and I was like, how, how? Is the common cold the side effect of a topical cream? And he's like, yeah. sounds like some like di- like contaminated cream, actually. <laughs> like, why did the you get cream a cold? is a virus. <laughs> Weird. Isn't um, that strange? It really is. And I also need more information. So if you want to send me the name of that cream later, I'm going to watch this commercial and I probably will just deep dive real deep. I know. I'm surprised I didn't. I think it was because we were like in the middle of like chatting with one of our little ones and, you know, like watching a show with him. But I was like, this is so weird. Yeah, I have a cream that I use for eczema when I get like the flare ups and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to go check the side effects now <laughs> and sanitize it, I think. Like, like, what do you do? Mix it with a little bit of like a sanitizer before you put it on. Yeah, that'll cure. That's good for eczema. It won't burn at all. Trust me. <laughs> you want to be itchy or you want a stuffy nose? <laughs> like, how is that? A side weird. Effect. Anyway. Man, commercials are weird. I know. You know. Remember back in the day when we used to have good commercials and they had jingles? Yes. And we would like sing them, like the Mr. Clean one. And like mm-hmm. there was like Goldfish had a really cute one. Now even State Farm had like a little – State Farm is there. Right yeah. now it's like State Farm is always, you know, it's like they say it now. Right, it's yeah. Like this bland, like, like, man, that's so unfortunate. I know. I still sing those songs sometimes. Yeah, for sure. I do too. Yeah. Yeah. So. We need good commercials. Somebody normalize commer- jingles. Okay. Bring it back. Bring it back. <laughs> Bring it back. <laughs> um, so 
the Murdaw thing, right? Oh, yeah. My mom talking to my mom yesterday, and she says, so my mom, my mom is 81, and she doesn't like true crime or anything like that, but she does listen to the podcast. Hi, mom. Love you. And I guess since she's been listening, now crime things are on her radar, and she, mm-hmm. I'm talking to her yesterday, and she said, now, have you been, have you been paying attention to the Murdoch stuff? And I was like, yeah, I watched the documentaries, you know, like a couple documentaries and it's really interesting. He's a really bad guy, whatever. And she was like, Beth, I watched every single minute of that trial. <laughs> I was like, oh, <laughs> you did? And then we proceed to have a 10 to 15 minute conversation about the whole family and like all of the, like just all of it. Like right. I was literally like you and I would do when we would discuss it and bring up points and like mm-hmm. our opinions on it or whatever. So we're doing that. And she's like, and you know, they say, you know, like when someone dies or gets murdered, like they're, they did all these good things and they really lit up a room. And she was like, <laughs> I don't think they did. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, I mean, they shouldn't have been killed, but I don't think they were good people at all. <laughs> Yeah, I agree with you, Mama. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah, the none mom of them seemed too upstanding. If, so, no. If you want uh, any information, I'll I'll put you in touch with my mother because she is very, very cl- clued in. Oh yeah. Well, I ended up watching everything under the sun about Murdoch. So, did you I, watch the trial? Like all the trial? Because it no, was all televised. It. Okay. Yeah. No, I watched all of the like. Datelines, 48 hours. Yeah, me too. Me too. Whatever. Netflix, all those things. I did also. Yep. All right. So, anyway. Well, we have another case that we can talk about if you want to hear about a, a murder. Okay. Hey, here it comes. Okay. Here we are. Back for another one. Yes. I'm ready. So this case was recommended by a very long time and loyal listener who has recommended several cases from us for us in the past, Jana. Oh, Jana. We Gosh, know Jana. You know, she's like, I mean, I want to meet all of you, but she's like one person that I think I'm like, man, maybe one day we'll meet her. Yeah. She's <laughs> totally cool. And she is definitely like our friend. <laughs> mm-hmm. So yes. thanks for this case. This case, this is a sad case. This is a really okay. sad, um, um, tragic case of some serious betrayal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, it's interesting. I had to dive into some cultural things about this case that huh. I really was disturbed by. Um, you may have heard of it. It's kind of vague. This is the case of Amina and Sarah Saeed. That does sound familiar, but I don't know. Well, there's another Saeed that's in the Right, I know. That's why I'm wondering if it's (laughs) unrelated. Yeah, unrelated. Um, Also, I wanted to say this because I know some of you guys like to look up photos of the people in our cases as we're talking about them, like as you're Mm -hmm. listening. I do that sometimes when I'm listening. So if you're like me, um, their last name is spelled like said, so S-A-I-D, okay. but it is pronounced Said. But it, So if you're Googling, okay. Oh, and we're going to Texas. We're going to Texas. Oh, your favorite place. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to be here today, though. This is super okay. sad. Okay. Let's get into it. So Yasser Abdal Said was born in 1957 in Egypt. He immigrated to the U.S. with his family in 1983 in search of a new and better life, and he settled in the Dallas, Texas area. When Yasser was 30 years old in 1987, he met a young girl while working at a convenience store, and they began dating. Unfortunately, when I say young, she was real young. She was only 15, to be exact. Ooh, eek. Yes, and her name was Patricia Owens. Patricia grew up in a very poor Christian Texas family, 
And Yasser posed to Patricia's parents that he was this wealthy, wise, like Egyptian prince and that he would take care of their daughter and get her out of her poor situation Mm. and make a life for her. So after only a few weeks of knowing each other, when Yasser asked Patricia to marry him, her parents agreed. Oh, gosh. They trusted him and they allowed this. Hmm what I consider an unconsenting relationship to happen. No, seriously. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah. 15 and 30. No, thank you. Almost immediately after the wedding, Yasser became controlling and abusive to Patricia. He would hit her. He would kick her. He began controlling who she spoke with or mm-hmm. who she saw. He controlled their money, even though he rarely worked. And he had – she had to ask for permission for everything that she did. Like literally permission to take a shower, permission to go to the store. If she okay. didn't comply with his control, he would threaten to hurt her or threaten to hurt her family. So like I'll kill your parents if you don't do what Jeez. I say. He always had – and she's a 15-year-old kid. Right. He had a, always had a gun on him, and he went to the gun range regularly, and he used, like, his proficiency with firearms as, like, a threat. Like, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It was just, like, always mm-hmm. this, like, looming, like, I know he has a gun, and he says he's going to kill me, and he could totally do that. Right, right, right. Patricia said that the physical abuse would occur three to four times a week. It's like a lot. <sighs> Poor thing. Very shortly after they got married, when Patricia was only 16 years old, she gave birth to their son, Islam. So this is in 1988. The following year, on March 2nd, 1989, Amina Saeed was born. And then just 12 months after that, like literally almost exactly 12 months later, on March 16th, 1990, Sarah Saeed was born. So now Patricia is just 18 years old. She's the mother of three young children. She's being abused. She's being threatened by her now 33-year-old husband and completely controlled. Mm -hmm. She was expected to work multiple jobs because Yasser didn't. (laughs) Like He just didn't want to work. And he would occasionally drive a taxi cab, but it's said that it was part-time, like off and on. When he felt like it. So it was, I don't think he worked for like a company. I think he just (laughs) had a cab and would be like, I'm Uber before Uber and I'm just going to work when I feel like it kind of thing. I was just going to say, is it like me with Uber? Like, yeah, I'll Uber my friends to the airport. (laughs) People don't know that about you, by the way. (laughs) I was thinking about that the other day. Christy drives an Uber sometimes. She drives for Uber. (laughs) Anyway, she does all kinds of random things, you guys (laughs) don't even know. (laughs) So much fun. Okay, but he wasn't, like, paying for bills or anything like that. Mm -hmm. And he had affairs also. Yeah. I just looked him up, and I don't know why. Why is he getting all the women? Well, yeah. Right. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) Right. Yeah. I mean, but the kids, kids, though, I mean, Mm -hmm. oh, my gosh, they are Mm -hmm. pretty. Yeah. Okay. In some facets of Egyptian culture, culture, Mm -hmm. women are not seen as equal. Right. Right. So Patricia and the daughters, Amina and Sarah, were definitely treated as second class citizens in the family by Yasser. But his son, Islam, was like the golden child who should be like doted on and respected and have everything he desires. And Mm -hmm. so he wasn't ever abused. But when Amina and Sarah were eight and nine years old, they confessed to their grandmother. So Patricia's mom and their aunt that Yasser had been abusing them. They did tell them about ongoing sexual abuse that had occurred by Yasser and Islam, the brother. Oh, man. As well as physical abuse that their mom had been going through and that they now were starting to also be abused physically Mm -hmm. by their dad. And the family knows, like, he's crazy. He is super controlling. Right. So Patricia, mom, 
was made aware of these confessions. So like her mom, her sister came and said, your daughters told us that this is going on. And she did leave Yasser with her two daughters and moved in with her mom. So she left okay. him. Mm-hmm. With the support of her family, Patricia did report these allegations to law enforcement. And in December of 1998, Yasser was indicted and with a charge of sexual penetration of his two daughters. Oh, wow. His brothers bailed him out of jail, and Yasser and his family began threatening to kill Patricia and her family and to take the girls and disappear. The girls were terrified. They're eight and nine. Mm -hmm. And they also know that when their dad says he's going to do something, he means it. So they told law enforcement that they made the allegations up. Oh, no. So police knew, like, in their gut that they these girls had been suffering from abuse. Like, the things that they were saying were not things eight- and nine-year-old girls mm-hmm. would say. But the girls refused to testify against Yasser, and so ultimately they had to drop the charges for lack of evidence. Mm-hmm. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Because of fear of Yasser and his family, Patricia eventually moved her and the girls back in. Okay. Remember, she is very young. She is a truly abused, battered woman. Mm-hmm. But still, I mean, gosh. Anyway. I wonder Patricia's- if her parents could have done something to, like, fight since she was so young. They tried. Her oh. family fought this. That's my next sentence. But really, mm-hmm. there was nothing they could do. They tried to get um, CPS involved. But, again, no they, no one was talking. Like they were all they, – so CPS would come and be like, is your dad abusing you? Is your dad hurting you? Is he touching you? And they would be like, no. Right. And they're just – there was no evidence. There was nothing anyone could do. They all felt like they were helpless at getting Patricia and the kids out from under Yasser's control. So like they, they just mm-hmm. – they couldn't get them away. The girls, as they got older, became involved in the Muslim club at school. And they got jobs and they made friends. They started to become interested in boys. Both of the girls were, I mean, they're pretty. Like, Mm -hmm. I'm not joking you when I say it. They are super pretty, but they're also really, really smart. Mm. They both excelled in their studies and they wanted to go on to college. They wanted to become doctors. They were really promising young Egyptian American girls. They were always happy. They were always smiling. And so they're only a year apart in age. And so they were best friends, like extremely close, always together, like truly just a team. Mm -hmm. Amina, the oldest, was very girly. She loved makeup and clothes. She had really beautiful green eyes and a very strong presence. Sarah was more soft-spoken. She was very athletic. She enjoyed to play all types of sports. They are both described by family members as friends. I freaking love this as being dream chaser, dream chasers and wish makers. Oh, isn't that so cute? Yes, that's awesome. They both had strong future plans for themselves and they loved like being a part of their peer group and just they were teenage girls. Mm hmm. Almost no one knew about the control and abuse that they were experiencing at home. As the girls got older and began having friends and participating in, like, school activities, Yasser's control of them escalated. He began to, like – this. it was so creepy. He would go to their school and videotape them without them knowing. Like, he'd be in the car and, like, watching them outside eating lunch or whatever. And if they spoke to a boy – Then when they got home, he would show them the video and punish them for, like, acting dishonorably to by speaking to non-Muslim boys. Oh, my goodness. He would also videotape them at work and then punish them for smiling too much at male customers. Uh, what in the world is wrong with this man? He monitored their cell phones, and he put a recording device on their home phone and one in Amina's car. Are you allowed to just put recording devices in your house? I guess it's your house. house. Yeah. (laughs) But, like, don't you need other people's permission to record them? I don't know. He was doing it. Huh. Interesting. 
He doesn't care. He doesn't care about boundaries and having permission for nothing. Apparently. Okay. Also, Yasser began sending money back to family members in Egypt because he wanted to set up funds there to build nice homes for his daughters with the hopes of being able to marry them off for dowry. Lord have mercy. When Amina was 16, Yasser took her on what he called a vacation to Egypt. But while there, he attempted to marry her off to a 40-something-year-old man. Like they were going to get married on that trip? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. And he was going to leave her there. Amina refused. And eventually, I think she called family members back in the States. And anyway, she came back to Texas. She was punished. Wow. The girls were threatening were threatened that if they ever tried to date or marry anyone that Yasser didn't approve of, that they would be killed as well as the boys and the boys' family for dishonoring him. He's great. He's this is guys. A, wish he was my dad. Trick top notch dude. <laughs> I mean, it's just terrible. Like, the, can you imagine living like that? No. That, no. I mean, I thought I lived in a strict household. Dang, nobody was recording <laughs> me and punishing me for talking to a guy. <laughs> like it's ridiculous. Ugh. So that brings us to 2007. Amina was 18 years old and Sarah was 17. Both of the girls found themselves boyfriends. Patricia, mom, knew about the boyfriends, but this was all kept very secret from their dad because, I mean, because they – were afraid that he would kill them. Mm -hmm. But they're just trying to live their lives, you know, like right. their kids. Yeah. The girls would sneak and see their boyfriends and they would write them like handwritten letters and notes and would only talk to them at certain times and like delete everything from their phones so they wouldn't get caught. And like they had like code words that they would use with each other mm -hmm. so that they knew like, oh, it's safe for you to call me mm -hmm. or safe for me to call you or whatever. But y Yasser began getting suspicious, and he decided, you know what? We're leaving. We're going to move. You guys are – you got way too many friends. You're involved in way too many things. The, his control was slipping. He could feel mm. it. So he moved the family to Louisville, Texas, which was about 20 miles away from the, where they were living. Okay. So this meant that the girls would have to go to a different high school. They would have to quit their jobs. They – they wouldn't know anyone. They were away from all their friends, just kind of isolating them. Mm -hmm. This prompted the girls to decide that, like, we need to run away. Like, mm -hmm. we need to leave. We got to go. They knew that Yasser was making their world smaller, and they f were afraid for their lives and what would happen to them. So they went to their mom. They begged and pleaded with her, and she eventually agreed to leave Yasser and her son Islam. And flee with the girls. Was Yay, Islam right? like showing any characteristics like his dad? Like, I mean, clearly he's not yes. being treated the same way. Okay, so he was. Okay. Yeah, yeah. He, 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 he. We'll talk about him later. But like, he is the golden child. He can do no wrong. He gets whatever he wants, and he takes whatever he wants. Mm, okay. Amina's boyfriend found a place for them to go. So he had some family members that lived in T Tulsa, Oklahoma, and called them and said, can my girlfriend and her mom and sister come because they are afraid for their lives. So they agreed and they planned to go there and stay with his family for a short time, which I love him. I love this boyfriend. Mm -hmm. I watched an interview of him and he is like, he tried so hard right. to like get them away and help them. So they were going to go there. They were going to live with the family. Then they were going to get jobs, get their own place, and, like, hide. Hide from right. Yasser for mm -hmm. the rest of their life. That was their plan so they could all be free and safe. So just after Christmas in 2007, Patricia, Amina, and Sarah secretly packed up and left Texas and went to Tulsa. They got new cell phones so that Yasser couldn't track them. And they hid. Yasser and Islam filed missing persons reports for them. Okay, so it's not clear how exactly this happened, but we know that Yasser was able to get a hold of Patricia's phone number somehow. So I don't know if her family slipped up or 
One mm. of the girls accidentally reached out or something, but somehow mm. he was able to get her number. And he didn't necessarily reach out to her, but he would have his family members call Patricia and tell her how distraught Yasser was and that he would change. He would stop abusing and controlling them. He said the girls could date whoever they wanted. They could do whatever they wanted, live their lives. And he, I will support you no matter what. I promise I will never lay a hand on any of you ever again. I'm a changed man. You know, do I just not believe you. it. Don't believe it. <laughs> the girls were not hearing it. They did not believe mm. it. I mean, he was a, a manip, manip, he was manipulative. Like mm -hmm. they knew that they could see that, and they said they would never go back to live with Yasser again. But Patricia, poor, mm -hmm. abused, scared Patricia, started to believe that Yasser could change. And that maybe they should go home and try and see if they could be a happy family. Mm -hmm. And I think probably a part of her is so beaten down at this point that she's like, I can't do things by myself. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. So on December 31st, Patricia told her daughters that it was the anniversary of her mom's death and that she wanted to travel back to Texas and visit her graveside and take flowers. But once they were back in Texas, Patricia told them that they were actually just going home. They were going back oh. to live with Yasser. No. So at first, <clears throat> Amina ran away. Like she was like, okay. no, I'm not. But Patricia went and got her. And anyway, eventually they all went back home to live with mm -hmm. Yasser. So this is now New Year's Day of 2008. So they've they just got back home after being gone for a few days. Friends of the girls were terrified for them, and Patricia's family was furious too. Like they were mm -hmm, like, "What are you doing?" How, you know. But again, like there's nothing they could really do. So Yasser's trying to play nice, and he's still making all these promises that he's going to change, things are going to be great. So he offered to take Amina and Sarah out to eat. Like, let me take you girls out. I'm so happy that you're back. I want to tell you how sorry I am. Let's go take you out to eat. Come on. So Patricia asks if she can go, and Yasser tells her that he would like to spend some time with just the girls. Like, look, I need to talk to my daughters. Mm. So around dinner time, Yasa, Amina, and Sarah all load up in Yasser's taxi, and they head out for food. At 7.33 p.m., a 911 call comes in. It is Sarah Saeed. Mm. Sarah is screaming and said, my dad shot me. My dad shot my sister and shot me. I'm dying. Oh, my gosh. Then you can hear, like, noises, moaning, and then ultimately, like, nothing. Silence. So oh it's gosh. about a six-minute call. You can find it on the interweb. Mm. Officers were able to triangulate the vicinity of where the call was made, which was in Irving, Texas, so a very nearby town. But mm. they weren't able to pinpoint the exact location. So it's like, well, it's somewhere in this, like, mm. one-mile area. Do they did they know the call who the call was from? Like they knew who was calling in. Did she give her name? She didn't give her name based on what I heard, but they traced the phone number back mm -hmm. to Yasser and Patricia. And then they went to their home and they played the call for Patricia. And Patricia was like, That's my daughter, Sarah. Mm, okay. So while they're trying to find the girls, another 911 call comes in. This is at 8:30, so just an hour later. This caller was a hotel employee in Irving, Texas, and he reported that there was a taxi cab parked near the service entrance of the hotel, and it had two dead young women in it. Oh, my gosh. So police go to the hotel, and they find the taxi, and in it were the bodies of Amina and Sarah Saeed. Both of them had been shot, and both of them were dead. So... Amina was in the front seat, and she had been shot two times in the head and likely died instantly. Mm. Sarah, however, was in the back seat. She had been shot a total of nine times, 
all throughout her body, like various arms, torso, stomach, like, and she, so she died slowly. Like she bled oh out. Gosh. That's why she was able to make the 911 call and likely passed while she was on the phone. Oh my gosh. It's a terrible 911. Like if, if, unless you have the stomach for it, I don't recommend listening. Mm-mm. No. Yasser was nowhere to be seen. He had taken his gun and left. Amina's last Facebook post that she made just before she died was that she was afraid to become a memory. Oh my gosh. Isn't that the saddest thing ever? So a warrant was issued for Yasser immediately. Everyone believed that he was the one who had murdered his daughters. And the murders were deemed as honor killings. Do you know what that means? No, I have no idea what that means, but I don't think I'm going to like it. Okay. (laughs) So honor killings, for anyone else who is not familiar, is something that is found in Middle Eastern cultures. And it is when a family member, typically a female, but it can be any family member, is perceived to be dishonoring the family in some way. So a family member, a wife who has an affair. Or it could be something like a child that has come out as homosexual. So the way for the family to restore their honor is that this family member has to be killed. And this is legal? No, 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 no. Oh, it's just something It's just a cultural thing. So it's not religious. It's not based on like – like the Islamic faith absolutely does not condone honor killings. It's just a cultural thing. Okay. Okay. And, but no, it is not legal. No, no, no. And it's not common. It's not super common. But right. it's like okay. these very extreme. Extremists, yeah. Yes, mm-hmm. exactly. So because Yasser was nowhere to be found, they knew that there was no way he could have just walked away from the taxi and gotten far alone. Mm-hmm. Like – He had just brutally shot two people at close range in a small confined space. He's got to be covered in blood. Mm -hmm. Like nobody's going to pick him up. He, I mean, they just couldn't find him anywhere. There was no sightings of him, nothing. He had to have help, right? So Patricia was questioned and she refused to take a polygraph, which we all, we have like a love hate relationship with this. It's like you're damned if you you're damned if you don't. We talk about this all the time. Like, and it's funny because I made a face like, why did she refuse? But then I was like, but why? I always hate when people take them. So why am I? So- yeah. I mean, I would refuse. I feel like I don't know. No. I don't know. It depends. I guess. So they did find, based on her cell phone records, that she did speak to Yasser after the murders have had occurred. But she claimed that when she spoke to him, everything was fine. Like, she mm-hmm. had no idea what he had just done. She was just like, mm-hmm. hey, how was dinner? What's up? What are you doing? You know, whatever. But we don't know for sure. Mm-hmm. So they start looking into Yasser's family members and Islam, the son. Mm-hmm. All of them claim to have no idea where Yasser could be, but police definitely do not believe them. They are a seedy bunch. Right. Saeeds. Mm-hmm. Seedy bunch. Criminal pasts, shady business dealings. Yasser's sister was wanted by the FBI for kidnapping her children and fleeing back to Egypt with them. <laughs> oh, my <Yeah>. word. <laughs> Seedy people. But police were never able to prove their involvement or that they were hiding or helping Yasser in any way. Like, they, he just mm-hmm. was nowhere. They thought maybe he may have fled back to Egypt, but they couldn't find any record of him leaving the country. Like, he gone. Mm -hmm. Right. Mina and Sarah had a Christian and a Muslim ceremony. So I think they had two, but it's not clear. Oh, wow. Okay. And Patricia, was it one that just involved both? Okay. I don't know. Mm -hmm. And Patricia chose to have them buried beside one another in a Muslim cemetery. In Texas. Okay. So Yasser is a wanted man. And Islam, the son, moved in with one of his uncles because he wanted to still have a strong traditional upbringing and was even sent to Egypt for a few years 
so that he could learn about the culture. He was known to make comments about the girls getting what they deserved. Oh my gosh, that's awful. I mean, come on. Yeah, it's your sisters. Yeah. <sighs> In 2009, Patricia filed for divorce from Yasser. I bet she did. All right. Okay. Investigators kept surveilling the Saeed family and continued to follow up on leads and tips about where Yasser could be. There were sightings of him in Texas, in New York, in New Jersey. Uh, in December of 2014, Yasser was added to the FBI's 10 most wanted list, and a $100,000 reward was offered for any information that would lead to his capture. Where in the world is this guy? Well, in 2017, a maintenance worker at Islam's apartment complex called police saying he saw a man matching Yasser's description coming in and out of Islam's apartment. Because he was like, I watch America's Most Wanted, mm -hmm. and I think this is him. So police go out to question Islam, but he would not cooperate with them at all. He was like super angry, like, you can't come anywhere near my apartment or me. So they just got a search warrant and raided it. Oh, well, raided good for them. It. The apartment was empty, however. But they did notice a sliding glass patio door was open in the back of the apartment. And below the patio, there were bushes. And they could tell that the bushes were disturbed, like someone had jumped into them. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So DNA was collected from the apartment from like cigarette butts and a toothbrush. And it was compared to DNA from that they had from Amina and Sarah and determined to be the DNA of their biological father. Oh, wow. But he's gone. Right. He's in gone the wind. again. And more years go by. In 2022, 2022, Christy, it's like just happened. Right. Police. That's like yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Police got a tip about a house in Justin, Texas, that seemed to be somewhat abandoned, but suspicious activity was going on. A couple of times a month, neighbors report seeing two Egyptian men bringing things into the house. I find it fascinating when somebody uses like a specific thing like that to Egyptian men because I don't know that I would have been able to like totally pinpoint like right ethnicity of somebody. <laughs> you Good know, point. I don't, I don't know. know. Yeah. Well, anyway, and no. it might be because they also watched America's Most Wanted and were like, "Oh, I bet that's that Egyptian man." Uh, yeah, I was gonna say I'd probably like look up his name and be like, "Yo, I saw Yasser." <laughs> yeah. Well, true. Well, it wasn't Yasser though. Okay. Oh, okay. It was just two men. So police put 24-hour surveillance on the home, and it goes for a week. So for one mm -hmm. whole week, they watch it all the time. Right. I love a good sting operation. <laughs> Islam Saeed and his uncle, Yasin Saeed, are seen coming to the home. They bring groceries and, like, bagged items into the house – and then when they leave, they take what looks like garbage out of the house. Mm. But eventually, after these two men leave, police can see the shadow of a third man inside the home. And they're like, boom, somebody's in there. <laughs> it's Yasser. Mm -hmm. So on August 26, 2020, they obtained a search warrant, raided the home, and 12 years after the murders of Amina and Sarah, their dad, Yasser, was arrested. 12 Whoa. years. Good on Texas police, by the way, for not right. giving up on this. He was charged. Wait a minute. With Hold on a second. I'm sorry. I'm confused on time frame. Didn't you just say 2022? I might have, but I meant 2020. Okay. So not yesterday. Okay. Got it. <laughs> no, I did say 2020, I think. I th Earlier, yeah. I thought you said 2022. Anyway, oh, just no. now you said 2020, so then I got confused. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. 2020. Got it. Okay. So Yasser was charged with two counts of capital murder and unlawful flight to avoid prosecution. Islam and Yasin were also arrested and charged with aiding a fugitive. Oh, okay. well, yeah. I mean... Freaking Islam, he's been aiding him this whole time. All of them had, you know it. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. So Yasser pled, pleaded not guilty. Okay. Islam Saeed pled guilty in January of 2021 to harboring a fugitive and one count of conspiracy to obstruct justice. And he was sentenced to seven years. Oh, wow. Okay. Yasin claimed that he hated Yasser and never helped him. And he went on trial in February of 2021 and found guilty of the same charges and was sentenced to 12 years in prison. I was just going to say, like, how can you claim that when you were clearly seen bringing stuff in and taking stuff out? That's helping. Exactly. Yeah. Anyway. And knowing where he is and not reporting it. My yeah. dude. Right. right. In August of 2022, now we're in 2022. Okay. Yesterday, <laughs> Yasser went on trial. He claimed that he was not present during the murders. He said, this is his story, that he took his daughters to dinner and they were driving and someone was following them. And he said he felt like he was being targeted for something. And so he parked the taxi and ran away to try to keep the girls safe. Like, I'm going to lead this person that is coming after me away from my children. And then when he returned, they were dead. And so he panicked and fled. And so Sarah was just like, oh, let me take this opportunity to frame my dad before I die. Exactly. (laughs) He was convicted and was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. He is currently 66 years old and serving his sentence at the Texas Department of Criminal Justice in B County. Okay. Okay. Let's talk about mom. Okay, yes, please. So Patricia, Patricia, she, (laughs) I don't know what to think about her. I don't know what to think about her. I don't. She participated in some documentaries. She claimed that she had no idea when she took the girls back home that Yasser would murder them. She said Mm -hmm. that she did not know at the time that Yasser was continuing to abuse the girls, that she thought his abuse was just to her. Mm. Now, she knew he was controlling them. Right. But she claimed she didn't know about the abuse. She believed that Yasser was going to change and that things would get better by going back to him. Some people, even some of Patricia's own family members, believe that she set the girls up to be murdered by Yasser so that she could win his favor like oh he has to they're dishonoring our family and he has to have honor back and this is how he has to do it so let me bring them back now she clearly denies this and she cries on the documentary she does and she i mean i i don't i feel bad for her in a way i don't know what to think about her because i, I want to shake her well, okay. So I that would be that would be awful if that's what she did. Awful. I, clearly I don't know her. I have not seen her it's documentary. Awful that she took him back anyway. Like she should have never If you want to go back, Patricia, go ahead. Mm. But don't don't take your girls back to that situation. Don't do it. That's exactly what I was just about to say. Like I don't I'm not sure I'm like in the Okay, she set them up to be murdered, but I also am not a fan of the fact that she dragged them back. And even when Amina tried to leave and be like, I'm not going back, she went Mm -hmm. and got – like, she should have just let her go and been like, okay, fine. Also, she does say – because she tricked him, remember? Right, yeah. She said that, no, that is not true, that they went back willingly. Hmm. But everyone that knew the girls have the girls saying to them, I would rather die then go back to him. Right, right. Like, so I just don't believe they went back willingly. I don't. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Gosh, oh my gosh. And that is the case of Amina and Sarah Saeed. Oh, that is awful. You are not just a memory, sweet girls. No. You are alive no. in lots of people's hearts. A lot of people love you, still love you. I heard them talk about you. Oh my gosh. What? How? Oh. Oh my! I don't even know what to say. I'm like, I'm in shock. I'm just, 
I know that we've had parents kill their kids before, but this is this is like next level. Like this yeah. guy is insane. I it, well, he's an extremist. Yeah, and oh my gosh, I so wish that they would have when she first left would have just stayed away and mm-hmm. but yeah, back wife. when they were eight and nine. Right. She left then, remember? Yeah. Like, I don't know. I can't – I obviously, we can't say what would we would do in that situation because we have never lived in such a terrible, awful, mm-hmm. abusive, controlling – we just – I don't know. We don't know what we would do. But mm-hmm. I would like to think that we would do better. Right. Yeah. You get out and stay out and at least not at drag least get the kids, kids back out. into it. Yeah. yeah. Lord have mercy. This actually reminds me of another one that's very similar to this. Um, I watched that show, I Am a Killer. Have you mm-hmm. seen that on Netflix? Where it's I like believe they, I have. I don't think interviews. I've watched it. But. Oh, like, they, it, it, it's a lot of death row inmates where they just interview them and then they dive into the case and they go back and talk to them. Anyways, there was another oh family. Gosh, I couldn't this, watch it, I don't think. The brother was part of this conspiracy against the daughters because the daughters were like dating Christian men and the – mom and dad didn't like it and whatever. And like one of them got married and the dad killed the husband. And, oh and like, it was like honor killings, like the same thing, like similar, like comparisons, but anyways, and the son was like part of it and he's in jail. So, cause clearly he was like golden child too, but mm-hmm. anyway, very similar to this case. I mean, not, I, I don't, I, I can't, I can't remember the outcome of that one, but um, anyways, gosh, terrible. It's so awful. And Jana said to Jana, thank you again for this case, um, mm-hmm. said, you know, she was like, it's just so heartbreaking because they were betrayed by their dad. Obviously, he murdered them, mm-hmm. but also their brother and also right. their mom. Yeah. Like 100%. they didn't have a chance. Mm-mm. Nope. Nope. And the grandparents tried, but there was only so much they can do mm-hmm. probably, especially once they were like, well, we're not. And their friends tried. Like the boyfriend, yeah. he tried. The oh, boyfriend's yeah. family yeah. tried. Like, right. Jeez. Oh my gosh. Well, gosh, I'm sorry you had to yeah, research I that. I, they were beautiful young ladies, and you know, I'm honored to tell their story. But I'm sad that this is their story. I mean, mm-hmm. it's just like, you know, yeah, same. sucks a lot. Same. Sucks a lot. Yes, same. Ah, uh, gosh. Well. Anybody is out there that is in an abusive situation, please get yourself out. Maybe we should link yes, some. I will numbers and resources and whatever. But oh, I know it's hard. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. Yeah. Anyway, you deserve right. well, to be yes. happy mm-hmm, for sure. Um, thanks for sharing that story with us, and I look forward to seeing the girls. Well, I did see the girls, but um, I'm sure you'll be posting more pictures of them. I but, will. Um, and I can't, I don't even like, I'm at a loss for words. I literally yeah. don't even, they're like making me sick to my stomach to hear this. It's so terrible. anyways, oh, let us I know did want to say want. too, there's a couple documentaries that you can watch, which I will link. One of the documentaries is called the hunt with John Walsh, John Walsh. Oh, so I've seen one on that. I think it's fantastic. Okay. I had to sign up for a tr- free trial for Discovery Plus to watch it. And so I had seven days and I watched it for seven days. Like I watched the one on this case and then watched all the other ones because I was like, John Walsh. I feel like I may have had to watch one for something or yes. came across it somehow because it does sound familiar, but I love John Walsh. I also <laughs> love John Walsh. It was great. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, thanks for that tip. <laughs> Anytime. All right. Well, come check us out over at Patreon if you so choose. Um, also, in a couple days, we are going to be live for live. our anniversary. So on the 29th. Yep, 29th on Wednesday night. So get ready. Grab a glass of wine or a cup of tea or popcorn and mm-hmm. <laughs> come snuggle up and let yeah. us know, like, come watch, chat. because Watch us record an episode. Watch us record an episode and throw in a comment that maybe we might be like, well, hell, that's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyways. All right. Join us there live in a couple days and join us over at Patreon and join us next week for another great episode. And just always remember, the world is scary. People suck. Hide in your closets. <laughs>